This is episode 113 of the Steady Trade Podcast with your steady, prim, and proper host, Tim Bowen. It's, I mean, it is on point. There's no like late night drinking videos. There's no like fart videos. Today, Tim interviews Ryan Sellers from Open Outcriers. I always joke, it's like my spider sense is tingling in the stock a little bit. You know, you just got that feeling. Now, Ryan started out as a market maker. The, the task of the market maker is when you go in and say, where can I buy and sell different options? I'm giving you a price on both sides. And in addition to his well-honed spidey senses, Ryan's mathematical way of viewing the world lends itself very well to trading options. Especially because I trade options and almost exclusively options, it does a lot with math and a lot with calculus and it gets it really into the derivative aspect of the math. So sit back and enjoy another interesting and informative episode of Steady Trade. And please, stay away from the fart videos. We wouldn't want to offend Grandpa Tim. I'm a grumpy old man. And I don't like things now compared to the way they used to be. Welcome back to the Steady Trade Podcast. Got, uh, you know, I know there's the Steady Trade drinking game where I use sayings that I repeat all the time, but definitely for real this time we have something a little different. So I'm um, bringing you Ryan Sellers from Open Outcrier. And uh, you know, Ryan's a, a, a really nice guy. I finally got to know him better. I, I'd met him in the past. Um, never really got to know him, so uh, that was kind of my goal for this podcast. And um, very different from what we normally talk about, you know, the low price, low float, crazy moving stocks. What Ryan does is he trades options. And may maybe some of you have dabbled in options, maybe you haven't. It's a very, very valid strategy. It's confusing to a lot of people, I admit it's confusing to me. Um, there's a lot of jargon involved, but it is a very profitable strategy if you learn it and put in the time. And it's hard work, but if you put in the time, you can definitely you know learn this stuff. And then the nice thing is uh, Ryan has a great Twitter feed that we talk about, um, openoutcrier.com. It's a must follow, puts out a bunch of great free information. And then we also talk about openoutcrier.com. So if you're interested in, I mean, he's got a great story. He started out in 2002 back in college, just fresh out of college, no trading experience. Here he is, you know, 17 years later, he's had one red year. So if you're interested in options and the journeyman trader, definitely check this out. Hey everyone, Tim Bowen here. Really appreciate you listening to the Steady Trade Podcast. I have a great time doing it, really giving back, and, and it's a true passion project of mine. But if you really want to get into the nitty gritty of trading, in Stocks to Trade Pro, it's a mentorship program that I do twice daily webinars every single day of the week. Never miss a day, market open, market close. And I think it is the best way to really speed up that learning curve. And the best thing about it, and this is something that I'm truly, truly proud about, is we built an amazing community in Stocks to Trade Pro. We have a chat room, traders in there all day long, new, intermediate, advanced, young, old. It is an amazing community, and I think by working in these twice daily webinars with the chat room, with the community, with Stocks to Trade, it is one of the best ways to become that consistently profitable trader. So as I mentioned in the introduction, we've got Ryan Sellers with Open Outcrier here. And I tell you, we're, we're, you know, we're going to talk about, uh, you, know, you know, talk about what he does at Open Outcrier. But a lot of you ask, you know, whether you hit me on social media or, you, or, or we talk on the podcast about finding good sources, like actual reliable sources of information on Twitter. And, uh, you know, if you follow my Twitter, personal Twitter, it's a lot of random stuff. But, you know, one thing that really always bugs me is just people that throw out just nonstop crap. And, and one thing I greatly respect about what Ryan does with the Open Outcrier Twitter is, I mean, it is on point. There's no like late night drinking videos. There's no like fart videos. There's none of this stuff. It's all actionable information. And what I love that he does is he cure, especially like early in the morning, I read every, probably, well, not every, but dang near every tweet because <laughs> he posts a lot of like 
good articles. I mean, I mean, if, you know, again, a lot of you ask, you know, Hey, what should I be reading to be knowing, you know, know what's going on in the world. And I talk about wall street journal and Bloomberg and Barron's and stuff. And what's cool. What Ryan does every morning, I don't know, five or six articles, probably roughly he's posting links of stuff that's, you know, interesting and quote unquote in play. So, uh, so open outcrier is the Twitter handle. Uh, it's a must follow in my opinion, obviously it's, it's, it's actionable information. It's good stuff. So if you're listening, follow open outcrier. So, so Ryan, um, what I would like to know is, you know, you know, you and I have met at, uh, I think at traders for a cause a couple times, but yep. I mean, it was literally like a handshake. Hi, I'm Ryan. Hi, I'm Tim. So I don't really know much about you, even though I've followed you on Twitter for probably five years or maybe longer. I don't even know. Mm -hmm. um, give us a little bit of, a little bit of background. I mean, it looks like you're in a, it looks like you're on a trading floor. You know, what, what, uh, take us back to, to the beginning, really, if, if you don't mind, you know, where you got started yeah, trading. Absolutely. Um, so I started trading, uh, right out of college in 2002. Um, I actually went to school and I got a degree in general engineering and I applied for one trading job through monster.com. I didn't know anybody. I just thought, Hey, this sounds pretty cool. Let's check it out. I had never traded a stock before in my life. Um, and I walked into the interview and the first interview was just an hour long math test. Okay. And it was sit down and let's see what you got. Now, why did you, you know, with the engineering degree, what made you, you just thought it trading was, sounded cool or what, or what? It sounded really interesting to me. Okay. Um, it sounded like a problem to solve. Oh, nice. uh, and that appealed to me from my engineering background was here's this, this thing. So let's figure out a way to try and wrap our heads around it. And then it uses, especially because I trade options and almost exclusively options, it does a lot with math and a lot with calculus and it gets it really into the derivative aspect of the math. Which and is so why really, I don't really trade options uh, because yeah. I'm, too I'm too stupid to do the math. But. <laughs> no, but it was, it really just, it really clicked to me from, from the math background that I had at college. Um, and so I was basically applying for two jobs out of school. And one of them was a concrete construction firm and you, where we would design the frames that you would pour high rise, you know, buildings in, which is, would be a cool job to go and say, Hey, look at that building I made. Um, but I remember I was standing on top of a building in, in the middle of Chicago in February, freezing my butt off. And I could see the exchange in the distance where I just had my first interview for the math test. And I was like, I'm going to go try to work in there inside <laughs> for a little bit and give it a shot. Yeah. If you to, to the listeners, I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm in Michigan and it, you know, it's, it's, it's cold in Michigan in February, but Chicago's next level, you know, it's uh, like, on top of a 30 story I, building with no exactly. walls, it was bitter cold. So <laughs> something in my head clicked and said, Hey, let's give this, this trading thing a shot. Um, luckily I, you know, I obviously I passed the interviews. So I got hired to work as a market maker on the SIBO. So that's where I, that's where I learned how to trade. So if you, if you don't mind, especially like for the listeners, mm -hmm. um, you know, you know, and again, just, just, I, I, I know you probably checked out the podcast a little bit, but you know, our main listener is the newer trader, which okay. obviously they gravitate towards low price stocks. You know, that's, that's pretty much where, well, you didn't start there, but you know, most of the average new retail trader, they're looking at low price stocks. And there's always, everybody's always talking about, you know, market makers doing this and market makers doing mm -hmm. that. So for the benefit of the listener, explain what you did. What, what was your job as a market maker? And to per the typical <clears throat> low price penny stock trader, were you constantly just running the stops on every penny stock trader, which they all, they all believe in aliens, flat earth, and market right. makers running their stops, you know. <laughs> right. So I was a market maker in the options, in the options pits. And yeah. so that's a little, a little bit different than probably what you're speaking about for the low sure. price names. Um, but generally speaking, the, the task of the market maker is when you go in and say, where can I buy and sell different options? I'm giving you a price on both sides. I'm saying, I believe the option's worth, let's say 50 cents. I'll buy it for 45. I'll sell it for 55. And that's where the market maker is supposed to make his edge is in that nickel versus the implied value. That's where the market maker makes their profit is you, you provide the markets, so you're providing the liquidity to the customers by giving them the fills. And then you, you take your little bit of edge for providing that service. True. That is the, what a market maker is supposed to do. Um, by the time I got there in 2002, the, 
the floor was coming to an end. On, you know, sure. so this this functionality of the guy standing in a pit waiting for an order to come in and then screaming out markets to try and get to get their fills that was on its way out the door as the electronic trading was making its way in. So what used to be all these, you know, I, so my first year I started in the Dow pit and the Dow pit, it was one of the larger option pits, um, you know, 60 ish traders in there. An option comes into one side of the pit. You hope it's on your side and then you can yell as loud as you can to get that trade. And the rule was whoever says that first gets the, the right of fill. So it's a identifying, um, identifying the, the things and in spreads, it's doing the math quickly, being able to price out the spread accurately. <clears throat> So you're providing the liquidity to the customer. <clears throat> now, theoretically, a market maker should, should be delta neutral. Theoretically, I'm taking the trade in the option and then I'm hedging my trade with stock, so I'm delta neutral. All I care about is that the edge on, based on the intrinsic. Yeah. When volume starts to go away, that doesn't really happen. You can't be delta neutral if all paper does is come in and buy calls. You have to find another way to do it, so that's when you have to start to branch out. You have to start to hedge in different ways. And then that's when you market making different stocks and market making becomes this larger thing as opposed to, you know, in the eighties and nineties, it could be an individual trader just goes in and makes his market. Then it became bigger firms. And then, you know, that's just kind of the maturation of the market and electronic trading coming into uh, the options. Bits. Sure. So now, um, so that was your, your, now what is, what, what is your training like in something like that? I mean, do they, do you just, do they just throw you in there or do you like have a mentor or how, how does that work? So I, I worked, started working for this, a Dutch trading firm called San Options and they were very good with the, uh, the mathematical and technical options background. Um, we called it the options Bible. It was the, the Sheldon Natenberg book, uh, options, volatility and pricing, I believe is what it's called. And so it's a very much a textbook thing. You're looking at charts. You're looking at, this is the, the P and L graph. This is how the Delta affects the call price. This is how gamma, this is how Vega. And the, the way that it made sense to me from my math perspective is the Delta is a derivative of the price and the volatility. And then the gamma is a second derivative of that. So if you want to think about it in terms of how an options price moves, uh, think of it like a car, a car is moving at a certain speed. And then the Delta is the velocity and the gamma is the acceleration. So by knowing these sort of concepts, you can understand how an option price is supposed to move. And so I got this really good background in you know, the classroom and the, the details of options trading, which was amazing. And then I worked there for three years and then it was gone. And I, I basically, I use it almost anecdotally now. Okay. I can use it to explain how my trading, like I, my trading career is interesting because I went from working at a firm on the exchange and then I went to work for, at a proprietary trading firm and now I trade for myself. So I almost did a reverse sort of way than some other traders. Some other traders find it on their own and they kind of ease in and then they go bigger and bigger where I've almost had like this sort of reverse background where <laughs> right right now now what what happened working for the guys and then all of a sudden what what happened with that firm did they 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 blow up or something or, or so what happened? Was, they started to pull out of the US uh, they backed out their market making you could start to stream quotes you didn't need people on the floors okay so it was it was a natural progression um, it was also very frustrating for me to go and find this amazing thing and to be good at it um, I remember being frustrated with how much money I made for the group versus how much I got paid. You know, that's the, the dark side of working for a firm is sure. the pool and you have no control. The partners make a lot more than the, the new guys, you know. Um, and then so three years in 2005 is when I stopped working on the floor and then I got hooked up with a proprietary trading firm. Now um, again, um, if you if you don't mind, no, nope, go ahead. Um, again, again, we got a lot of new listeners, so can you explain? You know, explain a prop firm. You know, you know okay. break, break that down. What that is. So, so a proprietary trading firm is a firm that trades its own capital for its own profits. They don't have customers. They don't have investors. Basically, they either have partners whose mo whose money you're trading, or it's basically a pool of capital that the group trades for themselves with no outside influence. So we started, so I got hooked up with the firm in 2005 and uh, the idea the strategy of the firm was really simple. It was, we were going to emulate market makers by placing orders on the bid and ask and getting filled in the middle. 
But because we weren't trading as a firm, we were trading as customers, we had a thing called priority. So you get filled before every market maker. Interesting. And so this was back in the day in 2005 when the markets were, there was a lot less strikes. You didn't have 50 cent dollar strikes. You didn't have weekly expirations. So the, the volume was much more consolidated. So we could take a, a stock like Cisco that would trade, you'd find the at the money one month out expiration that would trade 20,000 contracts on the day and the markets would be 10 cent wide. So you could see a market that's 20 bit at 30 and when you could rest on the bit of the offer and then try to scalp in the middle. So it was really simple, not complex at all, but you'd have to be constantly, you'd have orders out there in all these exchanges on all these types of things and you're just monitoring the orders, waiting to get filled right, and making okay. sure you don't get run over sure. in the process. <laughs> so you're just kind of like, you get all prepared to watch your stuff and then you sit and wait. And then you just kind of tweak it all day. Um, as you can maybe surmise, that didn't go so great in 2007. Sure. <laughs> so sitting, in, uh, sitting on the bid and the ask either way was, was, got really dangerous when the market went to shit. Yep, yep. So and again, we got, for, for, the, for the listener yeah, out there, you know, <laughs> no, 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 that's fine. Just, just you know, again, if you're, a, if you're a 20 year old trader, you know, for us old guys like Ryan and I, you know, 2007 was the, you know, the quote unquote market crash, a lot of extreme volatility, you know, Lehman Brothers, Bear Stearns went out and you just saw a lot of crazy moves. So, mm -hmm. so go ahead. Exactly. I, I want to give them the background. But yeah. Right. So during this time, we're, we're starting to get run over a bit. You get, to, you get a little gun shy. And, you know, obviously that the system was not working. Our, our approach was, was flawed. Um, you would see, like you mentioned, you know, it was the, uh, the Bear Stearns and the Lehman Brothers. They're buying puts 50 cent lower for a week or two out, which is insanity. But they're right. <laughs> so it's not, you know, it's not obviously they knew something. The market was telling them something, whatever it may be you could see that somebody was making an educated bet for monster size. Like it was, it was telegraphed like crazy. And so that's when something switched in our minds and we said, Hey, why, you know, why are we going to sit around and wait for something to happen and rest on the the offers just to, you know, the theory of picking up pennies in front of the steamroller. Sure. Let's, let's flip it over. Let's be market takers. Let's be aggressive. Let's be the steamroller and let's not be the guys who are waiting to get hit. So this was, so the, actually 2007 was the only year I lost money. It is the only red year I've ever had. And we got, you know, I thought I, I thought I was done. I was going to be out of trading. And so we kind of had a little, you know, a group meeting at our firm and they said, it, that's when we made our strategy shift. We kind of reassessed where we were at and reevaluated. Now, how many, how many, just kind of for me, like how many, how many guys you talking here? How else? So we had fluctuated between 10 and 20 guys okay, so, over so the not years. Huge. Okay, right. Not huge by any means. Um, from 2005 to 2015, we were between 10 and 20 fluctuating, okay. you know. Uh, so then, so right, okay. So 2008, we started to be, say, all right, we want to be market takers. We want to focus on finding the options volume, finding the news, and then aggressively taking positions instead of waiting to get hit. And that was, that was like a light bulb for me. So it was a, it was a, an active approach as opposed to a passive approach, sure. which makes me feel so much, which makes us feel a lot more in control of our destiny. We decide when we're getting fills. Uh, we make the decisions. It's, it was just from a, a strategy and a personality alignment. It totally clicked all of a sudden. Um, and so from 2008 until now, we've been running basically and trying to perfect that sort of strategy. Oh, okay, so you're still there, okay. Well, in two, I'm sorry, in 2017, that firm ended and now I trade for myself. Okay, okay, that's so what I'm I doing thought, the, I'm I, sorry, I apologize. I'm doing no, the no, 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 no problem. I, would, I just, I thought I kind of knew your bio. Right, but right, 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 right. <laughs> so we're doing the, but we're doing the same thing. We're okay. just, the firm is no more. I still sit next to five of the guys from the firm. We're helping each other in the same way. We're doing the same thing. We're just all doing it individually instead of I, as I a proprietary. You guys just, do you just kind of lease a space together type thing or? Yes. Exactly. Okay, perfect. Okay, yep. cool. So, um, well, that's interesting, man. You know, and again, I admit um, I've, I've maybe made one or two options trades in my, in my career. It's just never really been, you know, again, I, I, I like math, but, you know, <laughs> basic math, you know, sure. like, I, you know, I like to do, you know, I'm, I'm like a, a weekend handyman and stuff. I, en I enjoy 
you know, doing designs, planning out measurements and stuff like that. But when it comes to your, your level stuff, it's like, whoa, that's a little beyond it for me. You know, I just, so, so I never really have dabbled in options much. So. Okay. So with that being said, even though I had the, I have the training and I understand all the Greeks and how they interact and all, I only use them intuitively almost at this point. So I can articulate why I place the trades that I do using the Greeks, but essentially it does, you don't need to have a, a very extensive knowledge of the Greeks in order to utilize the option strategy, if that okay. makes sense. Yep. Okay. Um, so cut and dry, I mean, the strategy is of looking for news or what we call chatter. You know, when I say chatter, I mean something that's, I'm looking for an unknown event that could hopefully violently move a stock. Sure. And if it's good news, I'm looking at calls. If it's bad news, I'm looking at puts in a, yep. the simplest of forms. Yep. Um, I know which calls and which puts I like to look at just out of the money, 20 to 40 Delta calls or puts. I want them to increase the greatest amount as they go from a lower Delta to a higher Delta. Like I want the gamma to increase because the gamma peaks where at the money is, but that doesn't matter. You just need to look at just out of the money calls or just out of the money puts because these are the ones that are going to move the most. So anytime you see a chatter name, you can go and you can look at the options volume and that's where everybody goes. That's okay. where the volume is because these are the sure. ones that move the most. Right. So just like the lower float type stuff, you want to be where the, where the action is. And these, yep, this yep. is where the action is. Yeah. And again, you know, it's, it's interesting. I've never really heard it explained that way, you know, but, but at, this, at, this, at the end of the day, you know, like you said, the low float, low price stocks, we're doing the same thing. We're, we're, looking, for, we're looking for news, whether it be some BS cannabis you know, contract win, or we're looking for neg negative news, you know, right. some, the CEO got arrested and you're going long and short based on that. You know, it's just, it's just junk stocks versus, you know, Microsoft, Apple, Cisco, et cetera, you know? Right. So, right. So now you talk about chatter and, and, and how you use that. So, um, explain to me a little bit what you're doing at Open Outcryer because, and actually I, I got to check that out. You, you mentioned giving me a, a trial, so I will get with you on that. Um, cause I love the tweets. So I'd like to see what you're doing at open outcryer. So, um, it's open out for the listeners. It's open outcryer.com. Um, and, uh, just kind of explain what you're, what you're doing there and, and how you use it for your strategy. Okay. So in doing our, in doing the strategy that I do as just as a trader and perfecting over the years, I think I joined Twitter in 2012. And so in 2014, we just started with the Twitter handle at open outcryer. Um, and that was just, we started to see Twitter as a resource for information. That's when, you know, FinTwit started to pick up. People started sharing more. You could find experts and actually interact with them in different fields. And it was just, became this amazing resource. And so in contributing there, we were just contributing what we were seeing. And so we never know where news is going to come from. We don't know who has it first. Sometimes it's the options traders. Sometimes it's the stock traders. And sometimes it's the wires. So we monitor all of these things, trying to look for tells and where or when news might be coming. So sometimes there's a, nose of a known event. So something that might be a little bit more binary, like this year, some of the bigger events. You could look at like the Qualcomm antitrust, or the Qualcomm Apple dispute, yep. or Disney doing their video streaming stuff. These are big known events that are more or less binary. They're going to be good or bad. So you can see big bets happening on that. But sometimes you see options volumes doesn't really make sense. There's no known event. There's no earnings. There's nothing like that. So we just, we try to make a list of these things that don't make sense to us right now. So we can try to make sense of them later through either news or something like else. Yeah. And it's amazing how many times, I mean, we always joke, we're like, Hey, look, that trader just got kind of lucky, huh? <laughs> it's amazing how often these guys get just kind of lucky. Yeah. And it's funny, you know, I like, we see that again, like with, again, penny stocks and stuff, mm -hmm. you'll see, you know, and, and, and you see, you see those options as well, but you'll see with some penny stock that's just totally illiquid for a year. Mm -hmm. And then like 10 minutes into the close, all this volume comes in and then there's news the next day. And it's like, Hmm, okay. I'm pretty sure that wasn't random, you know? Right. Right. Absolutely. So it's, it's having the, not, you know, the experience and the knowledge to know where to look and then kind of. I always joke is like my spider sense is tingling in the stock a little bit. You know, you just got that feeling. Yep. yep. I use that to term too. Things, yeah. You just start to see it a little bit. You're like, I don't know what it is, but I know something is just a little bit off. And then, so at openoutcryer.com. So again, it's, it's kind of a, 
explain what it is. Again, it's kind of like a, it's not really right. a chat room. It's more of just well, like a data feed or, or right. Or, so we call it, we call it a, a news, a news platform. So we okay. have well, the way we present it is we present it in multiple columns or feeds and so the main column almost like is a, almost like a tweet deck metaphor kind of right or? more or less correct okay so we have we have six different options for for news and information i would say during the day you only need to look at one or two of them but the other stuff is there more for research purposes so the main column we call the ooc column and that's kind of just an extension of what we used to post or do post to twitter um you said you like the, the we do the pre-market stuff we always post the pre-market stuff as that's our that's my pre-market prep it's everything I need to, do, to know and look at to start my day. I need to know what's moving so that I know when something new happens. Yep. Intraday, we start to point out, okay, here, this option traded. Somebody just bought 10,000 of these calls. Um, Delta's strong while the airline sector is weak. Things that start to stand out. And then any sort of news, rumors, or chatter that we see, we're posting all that in the open outcrier feed as well. Um, we also have just a chat function called the pit where everybody in the room can kind of just share what they're seeing, if we miss anything, talk about trading, their ideas, their positions, anything they want really. Um, we have a pro Benzinga feed as one of the hours, as one of theirs. Um, we stop posting at three because the options are done, but news sure. doesn't stop at three. So we have the Benzinga feed there that's, that's constantly going. Um, we also have an RSS feed. That's really good for sort of long form articles and a little bit more extensive research and not really the actionable breaking news. And then we have a searchable archive. So if you ever want to go back and see anything we've ever posted or anything that, that Benzing has ever posted, if you're curious about uh, maybe a stock had chatter recently or you thought you saw call buying last week, just search the archive and it'll pop in there and tell you exactly what was happening recently in the stock. So kind of refresh your memory a little bit. Nice, nice. So one thing I, I will kind of, kind of bring <clears throat> this home here. Um, so I know... I, again, I know our listeners, they're, they're newer traders. What, uh, you know, you know, a lot of the, the deltas and the gammas and, you know, and, and straddles and all that might be a little confusing to them. Well, not might be, I'm sure it is. Mm -hmm. But my, so my first question is, and then I'm going to, second question will be like resources. Do you think, you know, so, okay, let's assume there's a 20 year old trader, male, female, whatever, you know, they're, they're interested in trading they're you in 2002. Okay. How do they get started? Well, number one, I want to say, should they start in options? Number one. And then number two, if you think it's a good idea, you know, where do they start? Where, where, where do I go from here? So. Um, sure. Yeah. So you could get started in options. You could not, it's, it's kind of, I would, I almost, it's kind of like a pick your own adventure. Some people sure. would do, would do great jumping right into options and then not getting confused between how to trade a stock versus how to trade an options. Because as you're learning, you're learning fresh on some, on some respects. Um, there's amazing free resources out there now that were never available to like you call us the old guys back in the day. Yep. yep. That, I mean, that's, that's insane. That's I tell, I mean, all the time I tell people, I'm like, man, I'm so freaking jealous of you. Number yeah. one, the volatility and the volume we have, and it's like, I mean, you could find out anything. I mean, it's yeah. like, man, I think about me in 2008. I'm like, I'm buying 15-year-old books. I'm like, you know, it's like the, the lack of resources were right. so much better now. I don't, think, I don't think you need to pay for anything to start. I don't, to be honest, I don't think you should pay for a service. I don't think you should pay for a, a, tra a, a trading service or a news service until you – do your research on YouTube, do your research on Twitter, find people that are accessible and willing to help you. There's a lot, there's so many people are, are helpful if you just reach out to them and ask them some questions. Um, for as far as options go, you can just, I know that the CBO has an options learning institute. They okay, used to have nice. great online uh, information. I believe Investopedia has some decent sort of starting jumping off points as far as options work. Um, uh, I mean, honestly, the the YouTube tutorials these days are just are just fantastic. Perfect. I mean, They're that's just... a good answer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I I tell I mean I tell everybody. It's like I mean, it's like that. It's just such an amazing resource. It's like, I mean, my you want to find out anything? It's like right. you want to figure. I like I had a my son's Toyota Tacoma was like making a weird noise. 
you type in Tacoma weird noise and here's like 15 videos of playing that noise. Yeah. And then you like move this bracket and it goes away. I'm like, man, when I was a kid with my junk cars, I mean, you, you, you'd spend like days trying to figure out why this thing was made <laughs> and then you might never fix it, you know? So <laughs> yeah, there's well, Ryan, just, there's such a wealth of content out there. So, yep. so just get out there and get your feet, get, you know, get your hands dirty a little bit and just, well, well, Ryan, I, I mean, I appreciate it. Uh, you know, good stuff. I mean, uh, you know, it's something that, you know, I'm always looking to learn. I've got, you know, I, I really kind of pride myself in a growth mindset and, and I've, I've wanted to talk, you know, I've always wanted, to learn, you know, more about the options and, and maybe this is my new to do and maybe I'll be bugging you all the time. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, I appreciate you coming on and definitely, like I said, and, and like Ryan said, you know, open outcryer.com. It is a paid service. It looks awesome. I'm going to check it out, but listen, if you're listening and, and you're looking for actionable information, follow open outcryer on Twitter. I think, I mean, I think it's, I mean, to me, because I like to know, you know, I know I'm a penny stock trader, but I still like to know what's going on. And, and I'll trade real stocks too. So I like to know what's going on in the world. And it's a great, just that those 10 tweets I read, I read them all every day. And so it's a must follow. And, uh, and again, Ryan, I, th I thank you for coming on. And, and I'd like to uh, just, are, are you going to be um, Traders Expos next week. Are you happen to go to that or are you going to be around or not? So, so uh, I think I'm going to try to go do it on Tuesday. Okay, cool. That's cool. my, so, uh, are you going to be down there? Yeah, yeah, yep. So I should be there. I think I'm speaking twice. So um, maybe when we get done, maybe we can exchange numbers. But uh, but yeah, sure. so 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 yeah, again, Ryan's located in Chicago. So, so next week, if you're listening, the Traders Expo is in Chicago. Um, Traders Expo is great. It's free. You know, and again, if you're interested in options, Traders Expo, the, the money show is a lot of options resources there. I mean, I would say stocks versus options. It's probably more options than it is stocks. So uh, they're all around the country. Check them out. And again, Ryan, thanks a lot. Nice to finally get to meet you on more than a handshake. And, uh, and maybe we can hook up next week. So Absolutely. Thanks, Sam. G'day. This is Keith from Down Under. And I like to ride my Harley through the mountains while listening to Stephen and Tim on the Steady Trade podcast. You can register to win real, actual prizes at their website, steadytrade.com. And if you like what you hear, give the podcast a five star rating and write a glowing report on iTunes. I did. And this is how we say goodbye in Australia, mate. Time to kangaroo down, boys. Time to kangaroo down.